Good morning, Floss Tube. It's Julie with Reflections Framing and Stitching. Today is Friday. It is the 14th of January, and this is Chart of the Week video number 121. Welcome. How is everybody today? It is raining, and well, we're supposed to get a little bit of everything, I think, today. Rain, freezing rain, freezing drizzle, snow, pestilence, you name it, it's supposed to happen today. I don't know whether it will or not, but anyway, currently it is raining and cloudy and cold, so, um, but it's warm and toasty in here, so I'm all good, and I hope you are too. So what is new? Let's see, I've been sick again, um, so excuse me if I sniffle or I cough, which I can kind of feel a tickle coming on, so um, I may cough. It is what it is. Um, I think I had one day between my la getting my voice back the last time and when it disappeared again. And so it's gradually come back this week. The cough has gradually gotten better. Um, but I am still coughing. So, and, and I managed to share it with Dan, which probably shouldn't be a surprise since, you know, we live together. I hope you're all staying healthy and taking care of yourselves. So, um, let's see. It's been a while since the last uh, chart of the week. Uh, so, the, but the question I had asked at that time was if you had a unicorn chart and to share that with me. So I spent quite a bit of time looking at at uh, pictures of what all of you were hoping to find and uh, I wrote, might have written a couple of them down on my list so uh, thank you for that it's always nice to elongate the wish list um, but um, I didn't personally have any of them in my stash so I wasn't able to help anyone I hope that maybe someone out there saw your request and was able to help you with that. I know of one person who did find the chart that she was looking for, so um, I was happy to hear that. Anyway, um, let's see, that takes care of the old business, and um, let I think we'll just go ahead and go into today's chart of the day, or chart of the week, and then we can chit chat maybe a little bit at the end. I've got a finish to show you, only I forgot to grab it, so I'll have to go back to the table and grab it. You might have seen it on, on Instagram. But anyway, today's, or this week's, chart of the week is from Shakespeare's Peddler. It's called Fanny's Flowers. It's a sweet little sampler. Got a lovely alphabet, big old pot of flowers. Those maybe lions? I'm not sure. But I thought it was a sweet little sampler. Um, stitch count is 111 by 202. So if you're stitching it on the called for 40 count flax uh, linen, it's going to be about 5.5 by 10 for a design size. It calls for all gentle arts, but she does give the DMC conversion. And this is, I believe, a reproduction sampler. I think that's a picture of the original. And there's a picture of the back of the original. My backs look slightly better than that, but sometimes not by much. <laughs> so as I said, that calls for 40 count flax, which looks like, let me get a decent piece of it. It looks like I need to order all I have left are small pieces. Um, it looks like this. So think raw natural only lighter so it's a, a very neutral grayish color is what I would refer to it as it's a beautiful fabric 
I have both the General Arts and the DMCs, so let me grab those. I did have to make two substitutions on General Arts, because you know how General Arts are, which I thought wasn't too bad, considering. Um, so it calls for Brethren Blue, and I substituted Classic Color Works Blue Corn, and it calls for Wood Trail, so I substituted Classic Color Works Sticks and Twigs. So, but otherwise I had all the call for. And they look something like this. Well, actually, they look exactly like this, almost. There's that blue corn and the sticks and twigs that I... And then the DMCs, fairly close. I think the biggest difference I saw was in the greens. Um, but I think her, she did, she was pretty spot on with her conversion. So let me show you what it looks like on the fabric. This was not an easy one to find alternate fabrics for. Um, I can definitely see why she chose the flax. Because if you go too, too golden, you're going to lose this one. If you get any kind of green in it, you're going to lose this one. And then you've got these two peachy colors that disappear on practically everything. So I can definitely see you go too gray and you lose this. So I can see why she chose the color she did. I was able to find a few other options. Some of them are a little outside the, the lines, so to speak but that shouldn't surprise any of you. If you've been watching me for any length of time, I do sometimes like to color outside the lines. But those are the DMC colors. They all look very nice. It's an excellent choice for this. Um, I have no objections to it whatsoever. Not that anyone would care if I did, but I don't. Um, so, in my hunt, I came across some 40-count prairie grass, which I'm trying to get to a fairly decent piece. Prairie grass is a beautiful color. It has hints of kind of a burgundy in it, but it's a neutral. It's also got little hints of green in, in places, so it kind of kind of has, it, it, it's just pretty. I don't know if you'll be able to tell that, but it is very pretty. And I think the colors all look pretty good on there. Don't you think? I think it would be pretty on there. And of course the DMC are going to work too, but I'm not going to hold up both. So, um, man, if you're like me and you like darker, I found some 36 count winter wren that I think would be good too. It's a darker, warm, rich brown with, I would say, almost um, almost a deep purpley color in it, too. But I think it would look really pretty on there. And then I have 36 count 18th century blackbird. Almost out of it also. That pretty much could be said for a lot of the fabrics right now. I'm kind of waiting on, I got notice that my fox and rabbit fab fabric was coming. I, I don't know, I don't know when, but I did get notice that it was, it had been shipped. And um, we're getting close to that 10 month mark 
from Picture This Plus. I think it'll probably be closer to the 12 month mark before I see it. But uh, So there's the 18th century. Your chalkboard black would work, um, although it's a little bit darker than this. But I think that would be very pretty. And then I decided to try some out of the box colors. Um, I just started pulling different things out of out of the cubbies over there to see what I thought looked pretty with the with the colors. Whether it ne would necessarily be appropriate for a a reproduction sampler probably not, but it's your piece, so do what makes you happy. Um, and if you like any of these, then then do that. This first one is called Smoky Pearl. It's a 28 count linen. And I think the colors are really pretty on there. Very rich looking. Everything shows up. This is a Mystic Gray from, it's an 18 count Ada. And again, I think it's very pretty. Gives it a whole different flavor, but I think the colors are very pretty on there. This next one, you might be looking at me like, oh God, what was she thinking? But actually, the color, the colors look good on here. It's just, again, it's a very different look. But there is enough of the burgundy in there. Hold, please. The shop is officially open, so I think it's going to get kind of crazy in here. But anyway, um, there's enough of, of the pinky burgundy that, that this works on it. So I, I, I think it would be pretty. Y'all might not think so, but I, I do. Um, so anyway, that is the chart of the week. Fanny's Flowers, again, from Shakespeare's Peddler. Reproduction Sampler. And uh, hopefully... You have enjoyed that. So, what else do we need to talk about? Um, markets coming up, as far as I know, they are still planning to move forward with that. Um, I think I'm going to probably have to put this on hold again. I think people are coming in, so hold please. So, I ended up with people coming through the door. I paused the video only instead of pausing it stopped it so I'm going to add this to the end of the first part of the video so if you see a kind of a funky cut there that's why um, I was just going to chat for a little bit I had a finish I told you that already and I uh, will show it to, to you in just a minute well I might not have told you that already I don't know I don't remember what I told you already Anyway, I had a finish, and I'll share that in just a few minutes. I wanted to discuss a little bit about um, Nashville Market. It is less than what it is. What is it? Something like six or seven weeks away. Um, I will be uploading sneak peeks to the website um, as they come out, as I have time to do so. Please feel free to. Um, pre-order anything that you might see that you would like me to bring back uh, for you. Keep in mind though that if you email me an order you are obligated to follow through with that order. Um, I, had, I had several people last year that uh, never followed through so uh, I'm not made of money and So if you're not going to follow through, don't don't order, please. But um, 
I've already seen a few sneak peeks, like from Teresa Kogut. She's got some really cute ones. So it should be a good market, I hope. It'll, it will, If they have it, it'll be really good to be back uh, to see everyone. Scary, I think, for me anyway. I know other people, it, COVID's just another thing for them. No big deal, but but for me, it's still a big deal. <laughs> is what it is. I don't like to be sick. I don't want to give anyone else anything. Our immune systems in this family suck, so I just soon not play Russian roulette and uh, hope that I'm not one of the unlucky few that that are fully vaccinated and boosted and still die from it. So, um, anyway, so feel free to email me any uh, pre-orders that you want to do. And, um, yeah, that's all I really needed to say about that. Like I said, it's on, you can, you can, it doesn't have to be something you see only on my website. You can, if it's something you see on Facebook or on a designer's page or Instagram that I don't have on the site yet, it's either because I haven't had time to get it on there or possibly uh, I'm, I haven't, I just haven't seen it. I am only one person. So it um, doesn't have to be just from my website. And let's see, what else do I know? Not a whole lot since I've been sick. I haven't done anything or gone anywhere or seen anyone. Um, Dan, I have shared shared this last crap that I had with Dan, so he's he's not feeling the greatest. I don't think he's got it near, nearly as bad as what I had it, but um, he was sounding pretty pretty nasty this morning when he was getting up and getting ready. Um, let me go grab that finish so I can show that to you and talk about it just a little bit. So, let me show you the chart in case you're not familiar with it. This is the Hannah Ann Wallace sampler from With a Needle and Thread. And when I pulled the floss colors called for, it did not look like this. And I fell in love with this soft pink look. So I did my own conversion to make it look more like this. And this is how it turned out. I'm pretty happy with it overall. That is how she turned out. Now this sampler has some over one here, here, the words, these alphabets up here. Um, and I did mine on 36 count autumn linen from under the sea. And I did full crosses for the over one. If I had been thinking, which apparently I was not, uh, I would have done just a tent stitch for the over one because I don't happen to like how crunched the stitches look on the 36 over one using a full cross. Um, I mean, it looks good from a distance, but I think, I think I'll get narked on come uh, state fair time because that it is, it is crunched in there and the stitches aren't real pretty. The other thing I want to point out to people is Hannah had a little bit of an issue, just just a little issue, with um, lining stuff up. So and I and I thought it wouldn't bother me, and unfortunately, it is bothering me. But I'm not going to rip it out because it's over one, and that's just insane. So if you'll notice these alphabets here, the over one, this one ends way, way far beyond, and this one starts at the, at the end, and that, that, that bothers me. Um, I probably would have done something to fix that had I, 
had I realized how much it would bother me, but I didn't think it would. And her, this isn't necessarily um, centered either. So I probably, I probably, had I been thinking correctly, would have fixed that. I just thought I would point that out just in case you're like me where things things need to be balanced. <laughs> I know you're supposed to stitch a reproduction sampler the way it was intended, but uh, sometimes you just can't. So, but anyway, I'm really happy with how it turned out. And um, I've, got, I've got the frame chosen for it. I don't know when it'll happen, but I do have the frame chosen for it, so. I'll get it stretched along with my other finish. Actually, I have two, two laying back there right now. So I have a total of three finishes. One I did in, finished in December. That was that Cranberry Christmas, I think. And then I finished the Redbird Sampler and Hannah Ann. So that's three in like a month and a half. I'm doing good for this year. It'll probably come to a screeching halt now, though. I don't think I have anything that's smaller that's almost done. So since I finished Hannah, I've been working on the next block of Hawk Run Hollow. So I figured I'd finish one of those and then then I don't know what I'll do. I have a couple of new things that I've kitted up. I have a couple of old things. I have a wild hair running around in my head about the Prairie Schooler alphabet and how I've always wanted to stitch that, but that is a big... I should probably finish Hawk Run before I even think about that one. But one never knows. Sometimes the urge is just more than you can take and you got to do it. So, um, let's see what else do I know. Anything? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that's about all I know. Um, the rain has kind of stopped for now because this is a couple of hours later from my the first part of the video. I had some out-of-town ladies come in and the one wanted multiple cuts of fabric so that took a little while. And then I had another lady that wanted m multiple cuts of fabric and so it is a couple hours later than, than the first half of this video. So the rain has stopped the snow has not started yet. I'll keep my eye on it because I do not want to be trying to get home when everybody else is trying to get home if the streets are bad. So I'm going to let you go now. Um, I hope everyone is, is doing well and keeping safe and having lots of stitching time. So you take care until the next time. and. I will try and stay healthy. Bye. You're still here? Why are you still here? I said goodbye. Oh, I know why you're still here. You're waiting for the question of the day. Well, luckily for you, I have one. So, here it is. If you were going to stitch a sampler that is designed in, for to be a red sampler so not a black not one that's designed in black that you switch to red but but a sampler that's already designed that the designer did in red clear as a bell what sampler would that be and for those of you who maybe don't stitch samplers you could play along you could go look at some different samplers and find one that if ever you were going to do one, that's what you would do. And if you need to, you know, end a sentence with, but I would never stitch a red sampler, that's fine. I'm just, I'm just asking, if you were going to stitch a red sampler, one that it is designed as a red sampler, I tend to like samplers that are designed as black samplers, but 
if it's if it's our if it's designed as a red sampler the floss that's being called for is red that's that's how I'm, that's your parameters what one would it be I would probably say mine would have to be would have to be Spanish Rouge from Sampler Co. I've never stitched a red sampler to date. Doesn't mean I never will. Um, I've always I, I I have liked that this one is not new. Sampler Co. isn't even designing anymore, unfortunately. Um, copyright 2006. So, and this is I'm gonna guess this is a really lousy photo, but this would be the one I would do. I think that is gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. Um, this one does call for a couple of different reds. Um, originally it called for Vicki Clayton's, Diane's Rouge, and Heartwood. And you need 10 skeins of each. <laughs> so that's on 36 count. So we're not talking little here. Um, but anyway, that is that would be my red sampler if I was going to stitch a red sampler. I want to know what yours would be. Now, go home. Go stitch. Enjoy your weekend. Bye.